And uh, so let's just take a minute and right there where you are in your home as we wait for more people to sign on, um, just close your eyes and let's just start thanking him from the bottom of our hearts for his goodness. So Lord Jesus, we just bless you tonight and we glorify your name. Thank you for salvation, Lord. Thank you for saving uh, souls like us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the door that you opened to have fellowship with the Father. Thank you that you've implanted the kingdom, your kingdom inside of me and inside of every believer. Thank you that you've opened the way so that the Holy Spirit can indwell us. Thank you that you've given us a relationship with our Father. Thank you for healing, for grace, for blessing, for goodness, for your kindness and for your mercy. Thank you that we can fellowship together in strange time on a platform like this. And thank you that we know that the name of Jesus is the name above every name. It is the name that is exalted above every name, higher than any name. And we just come today and we declare that your name breaks every curse, breaks every bondage, breaks every yoke that the enemy has. And we just come and we rest in the power and authority of who you are. And we praise you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm super excited to be sharing, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I just want to get myself organized on this part as well. Um, just to be sure that we're on the uh, broadcasting on the right page this time around, which I think we're doing, so that's good news. Um, but I just want to um, share tonight with you a little bit. You know, we, we are in such an interesting season. By the way, Happy New Year, because I haven't spoken to any of you uh, on this platform. So Happy 2021. And I really hope that you do have a, a, a strong expectation from the Lord in this year, despite everything that's going on around us, because I know with all my heart, um, that God has got incredible plans for this year. And, you know, even with 2020 being the strange year that it was, um, God did incredible things. And I don't want us to lose sight of that uh, in the season. Um, but one of the words, and, and we're going to minister healing tonight. That's the purpose. We want to pray for the sick. So I really want you to come expect and we're going to trust God for awesome breakthroughs. But but I also want to set us up a little bit for that, you know, as um as I was kind of thinking about this year and everything that's going on, I don't want to go into all of it too much, but one of the words that really stood out for me is that it's a year where God is calling us into maturity. And God is calling the bride of Christ into a place of maturity where we can stand and actually administer the kingdom wherever we go, irrelevant of the circumstances, irrelevant of what, of what governments are doing, people around us are doing, but we step into a place where we are the mature sons of God that Romans 8, 19 is actually talking about. Uh, Romans 8, 19 says that all of creation is waiting, longing for the mature sons of God to manifest. And it re it's a season and an opportunity like never before for the sons of God uh, to start manifesting. But these are mature sons. And a mature son is somebody who's led by the Spirit, uh, somebody who the Father can trust um, uh, with His kingdom, with His grace, with His power, and with His glory. And that's what He's setting us up for. And we, we as believers, uh, we need to step up in this season into that place of maturity and mature sonship, uh, which He has called us into, but which is also a massive blessing. Because out of sonship, anything can flow. Anything is possible. Uh, and that's a key for us in this year. Um, the scripture that I want to start us off with is in uh, the Third John, uh, verse 2. There's only one chapter, so Third John, uh, verse 2. And I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. Um, and it says the following. It says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. And uh, John writes this letter, it's an amazing, phenomenal letter, a uh, phenomenal idea where he says, listen, I want you guys to prosper even as your soul prospers. So there's a prosperity of the soul, there's a prosperity that needs to come in our emotions and our will and our intellect. And out of that prosperity, physical blessing will start flowing. And one of the things that's been under attack in this season, uh, more than anything else, is the prosperity of the soul is the fact that we can prosper despite what's going on around us, but our mindset can be at peace, irrelevant of the storm that's raging around our lives. And that's one of the beauties of the life in Christ, is that when Jesus came, 
Uh, he came to give us a rock to build our lives upon so that when the storm comes, you know, we all know the story in Matthew 7, the two builders, that when the storm comes, that the house will stand. And why I'm starting with this in the healing service is because your, your way that you think, the prosperity of your soul, is either going to carry your healing or it's going to be detrimental to your healing at the end of the day. It's either going to bring that financial breakthrough or it's going to break you financially. It's going to heal your family or it's going to break your family, your marriage, your relationships, whatever it might be. But, but this prosperity of the soul is super important. Uh, for us because God is looking for a mature heart, mature believers. You know, Jesus um, Jesus is so awesome, but boy, he can be straight, right? I don't know if you've read the Gospels lately, but, but he didn't mess around when he wanted to say something, right? And Matthew 17 is one of those examples, and it's a verse that, that we often read and we think about it, and it feels very harsh or, you know, whatever your perception might be about it, but it's the story where, where Jesus came down from the mountain of transfiguration uh, with Peter, James, and John. Uh, he walks down into the scene where, where a boy needs deliverance. A, a demon gets hold of him. He's being cast into the fire, this boy. Um, the father comes running to Jesus saying, Listen, Jesus, uh, your disciples prayed, but, um, but, but you know they couldn't get him free. And, uh, um, and Jesus turns to him, and he's like you know, pretty straight and like pretty aggressive. And he goes on and he says, you unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up, put, put up with you? Bring him here to me. And then we all know what happens. Jesus just delivers the guy. I want you to see something about um, just what's happening in that moment, you know, where, where Jesus is kind of, he's, he's rebuking the disciples and it feels like heavy, like, man, you know, it's a rough, it's a you know, deaf and dumb spirit and, uh, why, why, why is Jesus being so hard on them for not, not getting the spirit out of the guy? Um, but the point of the matter is it, that I keep seeing is almost like Jesus is going with them and saying, hey, you guys have been with me for, for a while now. Why am I not seeing the maturity uh, that is necessary? Why is there not faith in you? Why haven't you matured in your position in me after seeing time after time again what I've done, uh, the way I've worked, the way I've set people free. So Jesus is going, you unbelieving and perverted generation, you know, nice soft words. How long shall I be with you? It's like, how much longer do I need to be around you where you can actually, where you've seen it over and over and over that I'm good, that I am the healer, that I raise the dead, that I do miracles, that I do the impossible, yet you guys aren't stepping into that, you know? And, and that's kind of like Jesus is putting that again before us in this season and saying, listen, are you going to prosper even as your soul prospers? Or are you going to be stuck in this victim kind of mentality where we always lose and we're always the victim? Or are we going to stand up in a season because you've walked with Jesus, you've been born again for whatever, a week or 10 years or 20 or 30 or 40, but you've seen God move over and over and over again. When are we going to be the ones that stand up in faith and deliver the deaf, dumb boy? Because we understand who we are. We got the revelation that, that we are going to prosper, even as our soul prospers. We've got the revelation that he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. We've got the revelation that the same spirit, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives inside of me. That, that makes me like a supernatural being. I can't even help it. You can't even help it. It's not your fault. You are just a supernatural being because that's who he made you to be. And what Jesus is actually doing with disciples, he's not rebuking them. He's not being mean. He's kind of speaking into that reality of, boys, you know, like, you got to step up now. You've seen me do this over and over again. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Because that prosperity, that faith, is going to flow through your body and is going to affect everything. You know, breakthrough in the Lord is maintained uh, and turned into a, into a lifestyle through mature faith. You guys, you guys hear me? Can I, can I repeat that? Your breakthrough will be maintained through faith. Do you understand? When, when, when I'm shaken and moved the whole time, like tonight I get a good word and I, and I get a healing moment, but then tomorrow, the first time that I feel a little bit of pain in that shoulder again, then we go, oh no, you see, it didn't work for me. Ah, oh, you know, it, it didn't come through. It didn't happen. Instead, instead of stepping up into that place of authority and saying, no ways, 
I know who I am in the Lord. I'm prospering in my soul because of the work of the cross of what Jesus did inside of me. And you go and you rebuke that same pain. And that way you sustain healing in your life. You maintain healing uh, in your life and you keep it flowing like it should be going. Right? And I want to encourage you because it's so important. I heard a, um, an incredible statistic the other day, uh, which is quite startling to be honest, where it says that that was in 2019. So it's even before the whole Corona thing. So probably we can, you know, you can imagine with me that this stat is probably worse now. But they, they did it, uh, a statistic, they did a, um, you know, a, a, what do you call it, a poll in America where they tested people between the ages of 24 and 70, right? 24 and 70. And check just are they flourishing or are they languishing uh, in the soul? And 75% of Americans at that point were languishing. Isn't that shocking? 75% of people in the age of 24 to 70 in America before Corona felt like their life is a mess. They, they, they're disappointed. They don't, you know, they don't want to get up out of bed. They don't feel like they're flourishing in life. And, and that's frightening. Can you imagine what it's like at the moment with lockdown and everything? That's probably much worse. And that should be startling to us to think of that reality where we are victorious. We are more than overcomers right? That's what the Word says about us. We are more than overcomers. That's what the Word says. And, and yet, so many of us in the body, that stand is probably the same, unfortunately. And we have to step out of that if we want to start living in divine health, okay? We, we need to start living in a place where we are divinely healthy, divinely living in the presence of God, where we overcome, we're not under the ways of the world, but we're ruling over it because we're in Christ in heavenly places and we prosper in that way. And the only way that's going to happen is if our thinking shifts into the truth and the reality of what the gospel says. We all know the famous verse, Proverbs uh, 23 verse 7, that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy, right? Remember that one? As a man thinks in his heart, so easy. And it's amazing because it actually says what you think with your heart. You're not thinking with your head. The point being that, that the way I conduct myself in life, it actually sets in in a place in my heart. My belief system that I believe, that the, the core things that I believe in my spirit, in my heart, that is what's going to shape the way I conduct myself in life, right? So if I'm, if I'm constantly thinking negative thoughts, I'm thinking down on myself, I have a bad way of you know, just kind of approaching life and a bad self-esteem. And, and I, I believe that I'm a victim in the story that's playing out in the world. You know, all the fear mongering and all the craziness that's going on. And then we Christians, we go into like, we're the victims in the story. No ways. We are victorious in every single story. That's what the Bible says. That's what God said, right? Second, uh, Second Corinthians 2 verse 14 says that in all things, we will be triumphant. In all things, we will be triumphant. Even if we look like failures to the world, but with God, it's going to turn into, into a win. And we have to get that shift in our hearts where our belief system goes into a place of prosperity, right? The prosperity of the Lord. It's not, and I'm not talking about money and Ferraris, and that's not the point. I'm talking about a prosperity of the soul where I wake up and I feel like I don't have lack. I feel like I have an expectation for the day. I feel like I can overcome any obstacle that comes my way because of who lives inside of me, because of what Jesus did on the cross, right? It's a massive shift that the body needs because we have to mature. We have to step into a place of maturing. We have to step into a place where we grow up like we've never grown up before. So guys, I want to challenge you on these ideas as we move on a little bit uh, towards the whole topic of healing. Um, the fact is that Jesus speaks over and over about these things. And, you know, um, for, for to some people, I want to say this sensitively, but you've probably met people like that. And, and me being somebody that often um, prays for the sick and ministers to the sick in prayer lines in, in the days where we could still touch people before lockdown, you know, you, you hear people's stories. And, man, it's heartbreaking stories. I hate sickness. I hate disease. And I go, no, God does too. 
but so often you will come to certain people and it's almost like their sickness has kind of become such a big part of their story that it actually shapes their identity and what i mean with that it's almost like that story started defining them and their life and it's become the the thing that they talk about the thing that they think about more than anything else and and i'm trying to be I, i've i've been bedridden as well so i know what that feels like but in that space we have to be able to step into the reality that even in this i'm i'm more than a conqueror even in this i can influence the world around me because of who lives inside of me even in this if i not get healed today it's going to be tomorrow the day after but i can actually make a difference right here where i am and i can do something for god despite um, everything that i feel that's going on around me right and and that's kind of what i want you guys to get into is that we we have so much more to give we have so much more to offer despite our circumstances and sickness may never become my crutch sickness may never become my story that's not my story my story is victory my story is jesus my story is what he's doing in my life and what he's doing in the world right now that's the story the story is not politics the story is not a virus the story is jesus is alive and i'm in him and i'm with him and that makes me more than a conqueror jesus is the story period right period and we have to step into that and stop backing down and making other things the story there is one story jesus is victorious jesus is king jesus is returning jesus is all powerful and is inside of me and that's the story we're dealing with and that has to become our narrative our focus point you know jesus says this thing in luke 11 verse 34 and it's, it's a profound piece of scripture man and there's so much in the leading up to that as well but it's where he makes the statement and he says listen the eye is the lamp of the body remember that the eye is the lamp of the body and he goes on and he says when your eye is clear the amplified adds some work which is helpful to me that means when your eye is clear spiritually perceptive focused on god your whole body also is full of light benefiting from god's precepts let's just pause there for a minute so jesus is going he says guys your eye is the lamp of your body right and he says so when your eye is light your whole body is going to be light the point being that whatever i look on to whatever i latch on to my focus is going to determine the lightness or darkness if you want to put it like that that's going to manifest in my body right in my the world around me so even prosper even as your soul prospers so whatever you're focused on that thing is going to influence your thinking it's going to influence your health it's going to influence everything right that's why it says that offense in proverbs it says that offense unforgiveness bitterness actually weakens your bones it actually has a medical effect on you right if we're constantly watching the news constantly looking at the negative constantly looking at those things we're gonna we're gonna be dark on the inside it's gonna be dark on the inside of us our souls are not gonna prosper right we're, we're gonna we're gonna be um depressed people uh that 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 is stuck in this place where we're like our world is surrounded uh with so much stuff right so much negativity and it's the work of the enemy is going to feel to us that it's trumping is defeating uh the work of god which is impossible right it's impossible and even as i speak i, I want you guys to to listen to what i'm saying if, if it starts speaking to you then then start repenting even as i talk and as i talk before we even say let's pray for the sick now you know that god can already um god can already heal you god can already do something in your body just because we're sitting under the word and we're trusting him because it's his holy spirit that's going to do it right the holy spirit is going to do the work so i'm going to go on teaching but i just want to pray in this moment real quick and just say lord thank you that even as i speak tonight that your presence will start moving into homes wherever people are watching holy spirit increase the healing presence of god all over the place i pray that people will even start feeling pain leave out of their bodies as we speak tonight 
even before we get to the prayer part, Lord. Thank you that you can do it now and that we will start prospering even as our soul prospers in Jesus' name. So the question that I want to ask you tonight is, before we go on, is just, if the eye is the light, is the lamp of the body, right? That's what Jesus said. I want to ask you something. Is your lamp light? Is your eye light or is it dark at this moment? Like, are you so consumed with negativity that everything around you feels a little bit dark? If you're in a place where you have no hope for the world and you have no hope for South Africa, no hope for your nation, all hope is lost, I'm telling you, your eye has become dark. Because listen to what he says. But when it is bad, spiritually blind, your body also is full of darkness, devoid of God's word, right? And we have to get an eye that is light, a la a eyes, lamps that are lit up with the truth of God once again. And that way something's going to break through in our whole body, in the, in the surroundings around us, Lord, right? Something's going to shift around us, which is so powerful and so awesome. Mm. One, some of my favorite characters in the Bible is Joshua and Caleb. I just love how different they were. And, they, and it says in the Bible that they were of a different spirit, right? They were of a different spirit. I'm telling you, if ever there is a need in the church for a Joshua and Caleb anointing, it's now. We need people of a different spirit that's going to walk out. Because Joshua and Caleb's eyes were lambs that were full of light, full of light. Man. When they looked at stuff, everybody else only saw destruction. And these two guys, the only, only, the only thing they saw was God's victory. You know, I love it in, in Numbers 13. You know the story where, where, um, where Moses sent the spies out to go and spy the land and go and check out Jericho and see the, the promised land and go and look at it, right? And um, they came back from there. And I've, 10 of them were very negative. Two of them were Joshua and Caleb. So the 10 of them came back and said, listen, it's an awesome land. It's a land of milk and honey. It's, it's fantastic in that way. But there are giants in the land. And um, excuse me. And by the way, they weren't joking. There really were giants in the land. It was actually the forefathers of Goliath that lived in the land. Right, so I'm talking about three meter boys running around really big. So they're not joking, they were really giants in the lands. So it's not like they're faking, right? Let's never fake. Hey, there's some giants in the world right now. You've got a giant in your home called lymphoma, maybe, or or some sort of a cancer or corona or whatever it might be. You there's real giants. It's not like they don't exist. But what's interesting about the conversation is these ten guys came back and they 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 influenced the whole nation with negativity. So much so that Joshua and Caleb jumped up and they said, just please keep quiet, just stop talking. And Joshua and Caleb says, all they say is like, this is an awesome land and we can do this, right? We can do this, we're going to take this land. They have no doubt in their mind that it's going to happen, not based on their own strength, but what they see in God. And then the, the other spies, they say these interesting words in, in Numbers 13, verse 33. It says, there we saw the Nephilim. The sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. That means the giants. Like So really, this is Goliath's forefathers. So they're really giants. And we, listen to these words. Isn't it phenomenal? And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. You need to hear this wherever you're at. Like, they didn't talk to the giants, right? These spies. They didn't ask them, hey guys, how do I look in your in your vision. Do, do I look like a grasshopper in your vision? They didn't. What happened is their own, the, their soul, the position of their soul is they looked at themselves because they looked at themselves. That's problem number one. They looked at themselves and they say, we're like grasshoppers compared to these guys. And then they go, and they looked at us and they thought exactly the same thing. Can you see that their eyes were dark? Can you see that? Their eyes were darkened with a revelation of man versus a revelation of God about man. Big difference, right? So they weren't prospering. They were not in a victorious place. These guys were sure they're going to lose this fight. Absolutely sure they're going to lose the battle. But two out of 12 sees it differently. Two out of 12 have a completely different perspective 
because they heard the word of the Lord and they're just like, we're not even going to engage with this. We're stepping out of that arena. We're going to see things through God's eyes and through God's eyes only. And we're going to look at that and we're going to look at that perspective. So suddenly their souls are prospering and they become unstoppable warriors in the Lord. Isn't that something? They saw in themselves what God put in them. And that made their eyes light up. You've got to see in yourself the healing grace, the authority, the power, the dominion that Jesus has put inside of you because of the cross and because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You have to see that. And that is how you maintain your breakthrough. That's how you maintain your health, your healing, whatever you want to call it. People often say, I lost my healing. You don't lose your healing. You lose your perspective on that thing. You hear me? It's like that thing happened, but the enemy is going to come and taste you and taste you again. And the minute that you go into, oh, I'm only a grasshopper, guess what? The enemy is going to see you like one as well. He's going to see you like one as well. But look at the way Caleb does life. Uh, Caleb must have been an interesting fellow to know. But So we see his story kind of continue in Joshua chapter 14. Now, Caleb is 85 years old when we read this story, right? Um, now, I don't know how many 85 years old. You know a couple. I know a couple. But I don't know a lot of 85 years old that's feeling the way that Caleb is feeling at this point in time. So, so, so there's kind of peace. Israel has defeated a bunch of battles. But Caleb goes at some point and he goes to Joshua and it's verse 12 to 15. I'm just going to read through it real quick. And it says, so now, he's speaking to Joshua. And I want you to, to listen to this guy. It says, so now, give me this hill country, give me this mountain about which the Lord spoke that day. For you heard on that day that the giant like they live in that place. So again, we see that on this mountain that Caleb wanted, this is also the mountain that God promised him, there's like this one little problem. It's inhabited by giants, Goliath's forefathers, right? So that, that's a bit of a, a challenge if your eye is dark, right? But if your eye is light, then listen to the way this guy thinks. He says, uh, there's, there's giants there with great fortified cities. And listen to this. Perhaps the Lord will be with me. <laughs> and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. So Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as the inheritance. Therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of so-and-so, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, completely. The name of Hebron was former Kiriath Arba, city of Arba. For Arba was the greatest man among the giants. Then the land had rest from war. Okay, so listen guys, can I unpack this just a little bit? This is what I want you to hear. So Joshua is 85 years old, right? There is a piece of land that God promised him. There is an inheritance that God promised him, but he hasn't, to, he, he, but he hasn't taken hold of it yet. And he goes to Joshua at 85 and he says, Josh, listen, um, there's this promise that God gave me a couple of years ago. You remember that? He's like, yeah, I remember. He's like, I want to take it now. Uh, I know there's giants there. I know there's, um, you know, Goliath's forefathers are hanging out there. It's a fortified city, but I feel I have a chance because God's going to be with me and he spoke to me. And, and Caleb takes the mountain at 85 years of age. The point being this, that our inheritance, this healing breakthrough that you're looking for, this, this breakthrough in your marriage, the breakthrough in your soul in terms of your health, your, your soul health, um, your mental health, uh, the breakthrough in business, whatever it might be, the, pro the breakthrough in the world around you, it is seated in the way your eye is either light or darkness. If it's light, it doesn't matter what's on that mountain. You are going to have to face some giants to get to it, but you will overcome because God's going to be with you and He gave you a promise. There is promises in the Word of healing and not only healing, but about healthy living of divine health. So that means we're not getting sick anymore, right? There's promises in Scripture 
about that. But there's always a giant in between that we need to get to get hold of that mountain of inheritance and to take a grip of that thing and to make it our own. And unless we step into that and take those giants on, we're not going to get the promise. What's phenomenal about this is, like I said, the, the mountain, that place's name before it was called Hebrew, was called Kiryav Arba, city of Arba. So suddenly this place goes from a fortified city that giants inhabit and it becomes Hebron, a city of refuge for Israel all the days of the Old Covenant. Hebron is also the place where Abram made a covenant, where God made a covenant with Abram in Genesis 13. I want you to listen to this. So Genesis 13, do you remember? That's the chapter where Abram and Lot separates ways and where Lot chooses the best part of land. Remember that? Uh, and Abram gets the desert and God says, Abram, don't worry about it. I'm going to bless you so much in the desert that Lot is not going to believe what he, what he sees. And in that space, that's Genesis 13, the Oaks of Mamre, that's actually Hebron, if you look at the story. And here, generations later, Caleb walks up and he goes and he says, listen, there's an inheritance, a covenantal promise is in this very place. And I don't care if there's giants, I'm taking hold of this thing, I'm going to take it. Right, And I want to encourage you tonight, some of you are sitting, there's a healing promise in front of you, there's a prophetic promise, there's a promise of breakthrough right in front of you. People have paid a price for it, not people, a person paid a price for it 2,000 years ago on the cross. A covenantal promise written by the blood of the Son of God was made that said healing, blessing, prosperity uh, of the soul is available for you. You've got to take this mountain now and make it your own by taking those giants on and defeating them. And how do you defeat them? Again, the lamb, the eye. How do you see it? Do you see yourself as the worm in the story? Or do you see yourself as a man that is infused, the woman that is infused with the spirit of the living God and the host of heaven is behind you? And the warrior king says, take the promise. I've given it to you, right? If we can shift into that, Something is going to change dramatically in our world. Something is going to change in the way we approach things and the way we look forward and the way we, we take hold of the promises of God. There is a, what would be the right word? Tenacity, yeah, a tenacity that needs to come in believers about the fact that we have to fight for the promise and then keep it. But the eye has got to be light. The eye has to be light. Mature, mature believers will inherit the promises. Mature believers will inherit the kingdom and the blessing. And listen, guys, it's a season of maturity. What does maturity look like? It means we trust in the word. We live the word. We live by faith and we live by the spirit. So we follow the lead of the Holy Spirit through scripture, through vision, through whatever, whatever way he's speaking. Uh, and, you know, impressions, whatever, it doesn't matter. However he speaks, but we learn to measure that against the Word of God, and then by faith we walk in that, and we become the man that builds his house on the rock. We're stable, we're solid, and we're going to prosper, even as our souls prosper. The joy of the Lord needs to get a hold of us. The peace of God needs to get a hold of us. The righteousness of God needs to get a hold of us, so that we as Christians can become a beacon and a strong place of hope to a world around us where everybody's spinning out and it's going crazy, we just go, no, this is different. Where, where people see a problem in this season, we go, I see a promise. It, it's like a Caleb spirit. I see a mountain, I, I don't even see the giants. All I see is God spoke. That's enough, right? And tonight, as we minister to you guys, we're going to see something of that shift. Um, you know, the um, fight for the presence of God to be with you. That's what I'm trying to say is fight for that presence to remain with you, right? Um, Luke 5, verse 17. I'm going to read that verse, and we're going to start wrapping it up before we pray for people. I love it. it uh, it's just such a simple verse, but it explains again something. It says, One day as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea from Jerusalem. 
And listen, listen to this part. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. Right? So the power of the Lord was with him. The presence of God was with Jesus and everybody was healed. Right? My prayer for tonight is that, that the presence of God, the power of the Lord would be present, present to heal tonight. To heal your soul, to heal your body, to heal your heart condition, whatever it is. I'm seeing a bunch of things on the comments box and I'm sorry, I've struggled to get everything set up so I can't read all of it. Um, but I want, that's what I want for tonight. But you know what would give me greater joy? Is if the presence of God would stay with you because you learn who you are and the healing will continue to work in your life irrelevant of where you're at who you're with what circumstances you're facing that's the way we maintain a walk with god the thing is i there's nothing that i have that you don't have in the lord do you hear me there's no grace no gift nothing i have that you don't have you can heal the sick you can raise the dead. You can cast out demons because it's about the word of the Lord and about the spirit of God. And you have both of those. You can speak to your own body. You can do that. Uh, it was funny. I had a, It wasn't a big thing, um, a serious thing. But I had like a, 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 a thing growing on my skin, which I didn't like. And it was during the lockdown at some point, And the thing got worse and worse and worse. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have to go and see um, a dermatologist or a doctor or somebody to, to, to remove it. Uh, you know, uh, otherwise, because it's it's getting ugly, and it, you know, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a problem. Who knows? And uh, I just decided, no ways, I'm not going to the doctor. I don't want to spend money on this. I love doctors. I just don't have money right now. And um, so all I did is I just started speaking to this thing every day. Every day when I took a shower, or every day when I remembered, I just put my hand on it. I would just start speaking to it. And I just rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I just released the word of the Lord over it. And literally after four days, it just fell off and disappeared. Isn't that awesome? Just because we spoke the word of the Lord. We had a lady one day. I love the story. Uh, we did a, um, we had like these youth camps back then. I was still living in Pretoria back then. And we had like young adults. There were about 600 of them gathering over Easter weekends. It was so awesome. Loved it so much. And I was sharing just on the power of God and about healing and just, you, you know, who we are as believers. And, um, uh, and this one lady really got touched and really got moved by, by what happened this weekend. Um, so she went home and her, her dad was waiting for her at home and she just kind of started telling him everything about the weekend, how awesome it was and she had so much fun and just the things that God showed her and, and spoke into her life and, and she had a little, um, he, he called it a ganglion cyst, so it was like a little growth or a thing right under the skin, just sat there and she was talking to him and she was quoting a verse uh, from, from scripture kind of trying to just explain um, you know, what, what the story was and, and something that stood out to her. And she went, um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. She just said it. She wasn't even thinking about this thing. She just spoke. And as she said it, as both of them look, the sis just disappeared. Isn't, isn't that awesome? It's such a wild story. Here's the point. She wasn't in the meeting anymore. She wasn't under, like, anointed teaching or worship, whatever you want to call it, which is awesome, by the way. She was just a believer sitting at home, believing and having prosperity of the soul because of the word of God inside of her. And she spoke and this thing manifested and healing came and it remained with her. And I, I want to see this mindset shift uh, that needs to come in believers from victim to victors, from languishing to flourishing, from, uh, from just a negative way of life and being victims to being prosperous in our soul and in our whole being and as we do that i know we're going to see god do incredible incredible things in this year incredible things so the way i want to minister healing tonight is going to be a little bit different if that's okay Are you guys still okay you guys out there okay i see some comments so yay um, so that's good i hope i hope this helps you i hope this encourages you i hope this kind of shapes you a little bit and, and that it, because the point is, you might be asking, where's the healing? This is healing right here. If you can get this, healing is going to start manifesting. Do you guys hear me? Healing is going to manifest if we can get this mind shift going, because we're going to step up in a place of authority, unlike anything uh, we've, we've seen before. So the way I want to do it, before we flat out just pray for your bodies, 
Um, usually I, I do words of knowledge and we flow like that. Tonight I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So I want to start, first of all, by praying just into this prosperity of the soul. Some of you just feel flat out negative about life. And you're sitting there and it's not a condemning word, but you know your eye is dark right now. You know your eye is dark. How do you know it? Because everything around you is dark. It's just negativity all over the place. And I want to pray into that first of all. Um, that, that we'll break that thing through, that we'll repent into the truth about what God says about us. So if you're with me, just close your eyes for a minute and just pray there in your room. Take your family, take somebody next to you, and let's just start praying into this a little bit. Uh, you can just follow me and however you want to do that. So Lord, we, we, I want to thank you tonight for who you are, Jesus. Sure. Thank you for your great mercy, your great love, your unlimited power and reach, love and capacity for compassion for us as humans. Thank you, Lord, that our eyes are the lamps of our bodies, that our eyes can light up the world around us, depending on what we look at and who we look at, or it can darken everything around us. So, Lord, right now, we just come and I, we want to repent, Lord, where our eyes have been hooking into negative things, Lord negative news, uh, just negativity all around us, Lord. Where our eyes maybe started looking so much at our, sick, our sickness and our illness, our condition, that we lost sight of everything else around us. But we want to repent for that because there is one that's greater than all of that. And you deserve our, our praise. You deserve the glory. Always, Lord, irrelevant of what we're doing. So we want to shift our hearts to you. Lord, we repent of dark eyes. We repent of feeding off of negativity. And Lord, I pray, would you come and just remove that and give us light in this moment. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a prosperity of the soul. Let depression, heaviness, oppression, let it lift in this moment off of people as we look at you and we set our gaze upon you once again. We put all our focus and attention on you. All of it on you, Lord. And we bow before you in worship and we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to see the way you see. Lord, we want a spirit of Caleb, a spirit of Joshua on us, Lord, in this season and in this hour. We want to be mature believers in this season and hour that can stand in that place of adversity and not back down. So we thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I want you guys for a minute, check your bodies again. I know we haven't officially prayed for healing, but you know that Psalm 107 verse 20 says that he sent out the word to heal them. Healing comes even just listening to the word, right? And what I want to see with you guys is check your bodies. If you had pain somewhere, you had a certain condition, if that has already improved, would you just put a thumbs up on, on the comment box? It would just be great to see that. I would love to see what's happening and, and just to say, if anything already happened, I already saw a couple of you that saying that, listen, uh, God already did something, something awesome has happened, there's already a breakthrough. So if that's, if that's you, uh, then just give me a, a, a bit of an indication right now. That'll be awesome to see that. And uh, I would love to just hear about that. It's going to help me, it's going to encourage me as well. So if any of you have had any uh, level of breakthrough yet, just, just point, thumbs up or anything like that. Uh, let's see... Okay, I think we might be a little bit behind on the response. All right, I see headaches is already, already left. I saw another comment now about people saying that some pain out of shoulders has already left, if I'm looking right. Um, so it's amazing that things have already, there's another thumbs up. That's awesome. Just that, There's a lot coming through now. Yay, we're catching up. That's awesome. Uh, if you, if you want to share the story, just come and share the story as well. And let's just see. And what I want us to do tonight is, I, I'm sorry that I'm watching on this side, but I'm trying to manage all of, um, um, all of the stuff and just seeing everything, what's happening. What I want us to do tonight is I'm going to pray for your body. I'm going to pray for, 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 for healing to flow. I don't know all the conditions, and I want to tell you something. That, that doesn't matter tonight uh, because the power of God is with us to heal, okay? 
So it doesn't matter. People just touched Jesus. He didn't even know. That. Well, he knew, but they didn't even have to get to tell him what was wrong. And healing just flowed out of him in any way. God knows your condition. God knows your circumstances. He knows uh, what's going on in your body and what's going on uh, in you right now. So we're going to pray in general. But if you're with somebody, I want you to pray, um, pray with me. Uh, for that person. We want to raise up an army of faith healers. Is that okay? An army of people that step out in faith and, and pray for the sick. So if you're with your family, you're going to pray for your family right now. If they're not with you, you're just going to go um, with me after that. And we're just going to release healing over everybody. And you pray as if you're the guy that's on the screen right now ministering to people. Is that a deal? Can we do it like that? All right. I believe you're saying yes. All right. So, so here we go. Um, so just with me now, let's just release this wave of prayer over the sick. Uh, wherever they're at, whatever is wrong, we just start stepping into that. So Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we praise you for healing. We praise you that you said it is done in the name of Jesus. We praise you. That you said you've paid it why by your stripes we are healed. We are healed. We are healed by your stripes. It is a done deal. We praise you that that's the reality and that that's the truth. So, Lord, in that authority, we come right now and we stand and we say to cancer, well, I don't care what giant it is cancer, fibromyalgia, um, or arthritis, osteoporosis, um, COVID. Uh, neuron diseases, autoimmune, autoimmune issues, uh, eye issues, ear issues. I even speak to ears. I command ears to open now in the name of Jesus. Deaf ears just open up right now in the name of Jesus. I felt like people's ears are just going to pop open, like whatever it might be. It might have been completely deaf, partly deaf, but there's something about people's ears opening up. Sure, there's something about people's ears opening up tonight. So if you have ear issues, put your hands on your ears and start praying with me. Start speaking into that. So we command ears to open up right now in the name of Jesus. I command them to open up right now in Jesus' name as a sign that we're a generation that's going to hear the word. I command deaf ears, hard hearing people, I command those ears open up in the name of Jesus now, Lord, I release the fire of God over every sick, uh, sickness, Lord, uh, prostate issues, cancers, whatever. We rebuke it right now. We rebuke tumors. We rebuke growths. We rebuke, um, um, uh, what's that thing, uh, um, migraines. We rebuke breathing issues. We rebuke uh, a, cancer, a cancer in the throat. I don't know why I just feel that. So we just re we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we just say, life of God in Jesus' name, thank you that our eye is light and that the whole body is lighting up tonight with the blessing and the healing virtue and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just release that like a fire, like a river tonight. Flow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shen Dabato. Jesus' name. Lord, ulcers, Lord. Lord, I speak into back pain, Lord. I speak into people with metal in their body. We command that stuff to leave their bodies, metal pins, even pacemakers with heart conditions, Lord. Heal their heart so and remove the pacemakers, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray for relatives in hospitals, Lord. Relatives in heart spaces. We just say in the name of Jesus, be healed right now, right now in Jesus' name, fire of the Lord just fall in the name of Jesus in the name some of Jesus as we're sitting I want you to just pray just pray 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 keep on praising keep on praising the Lord right now thank him for your breakthrough even as we're sitting here and let's just be expectant so Lord we just say thank you thank you for healings already we're seeing the healing testimonies even as I speak we praise you for it Lord Thank you for deliverance, Lord. Yeah, I want to pray about demonic oppression. Listen, guys, that's something we like to talk about. I don't know where your stance on or position on those things is, but it's real. And the enemy hates you. I'm sorry to tell that to you, but don't worry. God loves you and God laughs at the enemy. That's what Psalm 2 says. He says he looks at the plans of the enemy 
with the region, the plans that they're planning. And, and Jesus laughs. He says, I, I literally, he laughs at them. He says, what do you think you're going to do, right? So God is laughing at the plans of the enemy. But when it comes to the soul and when it comes to our emotions, uh, demonic oppression comes and depression, all those kind of things, spirit of torment that comes on people's lives, um, like certain sicknesses are demonically bound, not all of them, but, but some of them. And it's a demon that sits, a spirit of fear. Man, I really want to speak, um, we'd, we'd like to speak into a spirit of fear with you guys, uh, anxiety, those kind of things. It must go in the name of Jesus. So if you feel any of those kind of things, like I want to speak about addictions even tonight, you like you have an addiction issue, whether that is to pain pills, whether that is to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, uh, pornography, whatever. I want to speak into that stuff because, guys, listen, the enemy is trying to just wreak havoc among the sons and daughters of God. But the word says that he will not harm us if we stand up in that authority. So if that's you, let's just pray over that stuff as well. So, Lord, I come in Jesus' name and we bind demonic activity over people's lives in Jesus' name. We bind demonic activity in people's spines in the name of Jesus, in their lungs, in their bodies. Well, we, we, we rebuke demonic activities in people's eating habits, addictions. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, break. Addictions break, oppression break, demonic attack break in the name of Jesus. Lord, as your blood just come upon people and your fire just come around people, Lord, we praise you and we worship you and we bless your name. And we say, Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for freedom in the name of Jesus. Your word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the more we invite the Spirit in, the more liberty needs to come. It's like the Spirit pushes everything out that shouldn't be there. So in this moment, even I want you to put your hand on, your, on yourself, however you can, uh, especially around the demonic stuff. We're just going to invite the Holy Spirit in. So Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill us tonight. Fill us tonight. Fill us. Fill us and let spirits of torment just leave us, demonic spirits of addiction, leave in the name of Jesus. Curses break off of us in Jesus' name. Depression lift in the name of Jesus. Anxiety lift in the name of Jesus. And victim mentalities. Man, listen, so many people are playing the victim. Uh, and, and a lot of it is absolutely a lie by the enemy. And that victim mentality has become a demonic spirit and it's kind of your way of not dealing with life. If that's you, nobody can see you. You don't have to say a thing. But can we pray about that tonight and just say enough is enough, right? So if that victim mentality is something you always feel like a victim, guys, that is not the gospel. That is not the truth. And I want us to pray into that. So Lord, I pray for people right now that has this victim mentality that has become this just a demonic uh, of, of, um, stronghold in their lives. We, we break that thing in the name of Jesus. No more victim mentality in Jesus' name. We are more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. We are always victorious, always triumphant in the name of Jesus. And we have absolute power and authority because of the one who lives inside of us. I rebuke that thinking in Jesus' name. We bind that spirit over people's lives in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Amen. Guys, I want to thank you so, so much for spending this time with us tonight. And Man, I'm so excited about what I feel like God is doing. And um, I want to keep on praying, but it's like I feel the Lord kind of stopping me a little bit because uh, it's about you guys standing up now in this moment and just contesting for your breakthrough with the Lord like never before. I want to encourage you guys to stand up. I want to encourage you guys to, 
even right now just start speaking into that issue speak into it keep on speaking into it we, we've had so many people that we pray in the service and then later in the week they get their healing or they feel like a 20 percent improvement and then it starts growing in the week uh, we had a lady with a serious back issue we were praying we were just talking when i we were even talking about healing and as we talked she started feeling warmth uh, flow through her back and God was touching her spine. It was an incredible miracle. I mean, she came afterwards completely healed, no pain after being like in tremendous pain for a very long time. She got completely healed uh, that night. And then two, three days later, she messaged me again and she said, listen, um, like the enemy is just, I mean, her back is hurting again. The whole thing is going in the wrong direction. And we just told her, just keep on standing for that healing. So she did it. And she went into a fight that week. Um, for her healing and by the end of the week the back was completely healed completely restored because she fought for it she contended for that victory that was manifested that night but she stood and she contended it and god pulled it through for her so guys i want to i want to bless you tonight and i want to just remind you that you have authority that you can prosper as your soul prospers and tonight is a night where we stand up in the Lord and we say, this is enough. This is enough over my children. It's enough over my family. And you contend for that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I thank you for what you already did. Come and seal this word in people's hearts. Seal the healing that you were in the hearts of people. I bless you and I praise you for it, Lord. And Lord, we rebuke disease right now one more time. And Lord, thank you that the power to heal will be with every single person watching this because that is who you are, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So guys, bless you. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Enjoy your services wherever you're at. Uh, may, may you prosper. May, may God's blessing overtake you. Maybe, may you just see his goodness in everything that he does. He's awesome. 2021 is going to be awesome. Don't let anybody lie to you. Uh, it's not going to be awesome for any other reason because Jesus is Lord and we're going to be okay. So God bless you guys and, and thank you for this evening. Bye-bye.